Hey, welcome back. In this second part of the series, we are going to discover how to organize the HTML code in the right way in order for Barba.js to work. Before we jump into the code, you need to know that Barba.js won't work unless we have a local server running. Therefore, you have to install Node Express, WAMP or any other alternative. Or you can install an extension called Live Server that I'm using right now if you're a VS Code user. So let's get started with creating some basic HTML files. That done, let's take a look at what happens when we jump from one page to another, without Barba.js of course. And as you can see, each time we click on a link, the browser loads an entire new page, which is completely expected. Now, let's include Barba.js to our project. The first step is to copy and paste the CDN link into the index page, or you can download the library via npm. The second step is to initialize the library. The third step is to set the wrapper, which is the main barba.js section, using the data barba attribute and give it wrapper as a value. If you watched the introductory video, you know that we need to set the container, which is the changeable part of the page. In this example, only the image is the unique part of each page, the navigation buttons are the same. With that being said, let's create a section and assign it as the container by adding the data barba attribute and set its value to container. Actually, we don't always have to set the body tag as the wrapper, we can use any other element instead, as long as it has the container as a child node, so you should keep that in mind. Now, every element outside the container except the title tag will not be changed and will be kept on the page even if we go from this page to another one. So that done, now we need to assign a wrapper and a container on the second page. Let's refresh the index page and see if everything works as intended. And there we go, the page is not entirely reloaded, only the section gets updated with the image from the second page. Again, the content of the container doesn't need to have the same type of elements. So let's create another page, and within its container, we'll put an h1 tag instead of an image.
You may have noticed that I didn't include the CDN link to the second and the third pages, and yet Barba still works fine. Well, that's because we are still on the same page, which is the index, and let me say it again, the only thing that is changing is the content of the container. Let me prove that by adding some elements outside the container of the second and the third pages. As you can see, the new H1s from both of the pages didn't show up. This, in fact, may cause a problem. So, let's say for instance that the visitor entered the website from any page other than the index. Now, the H1 of the page 2 shows up. Furthermore, if we open the inspector, You'll notice that the CDN link to the library doesn't show up because obviously we didn't include it to this page. That also means that we are back to using the typical way of navigating through pages until we open a page that includes Barba. Now, you may think that there is a small chance that the user would take that way to access your website. Well, I'll give you that. However, what are the chances of a visitor refreshing or clicking on a link that leads to the same page he is on? Now, the probability of that happening is quite high. So, let me tell you that refreshing or clicking on a link that leads to the same page you are on forces the page to be completely loaded, which creates the same problem that we have just been talking about. This is actually not a bug. In fact, that's a feature done intentionally by the creator of the library. So, what should we do to prevent that from happening, you might be asking. One way to fix this issue is to use the same exact structure of the index file in every single page, except the container, of course, and that's it. So this should be it for this part of the series, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.